This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, in the uh, previous lecture, I went through key factor analysis, uh, the conventional way of deciding if we've got limited resources, uh, what products we should produce to make maximum profit. But now we're going to look at what we call throughput accounting. Uh, which is a more modern and uh, certainly for many businesses perhaps a more practical approach to the same sort of problem. Um, now on the uh, second page of the notes you'll see various definitions. I'm not going to just talk through them. I'll use the example to explain what throughput accounting is, how we deal with it, and at the same time, I will explain all those definitions. So you've got them typed out there, but uh, it makes no sense at all just to read them uh, as they stand. Let me look at the example. And the example is on uh, page three, and is exactly the same example um, as we had in the last lecture. Exactly. Uh, you don't need to uh, sit and compare the two. Everything is exactly the same. And it's the same uh, requirement, certainly for part A. Um, what's the optimum production plan? What's the maximum profit? But this time we're going to use throughput accounting. And apart from uh, a few bits of terminology, all you really need to be able to do this and to, to see the, the logic is to know one big assumption that we make. And I'll write it down in one second. But you see, if you think back to the previous example, we said fixed costs are going to be fixed. Fine. I said enough about that. But we also said as we produce more or less units, we get more or less revenue. And the variable costs in total will be higher or lower. But think about it. Not for all businesses, but for many businesses. In the short term, labour, for example, in total, isn't actually variable at all. I don't know where you work, but I would imagine that you're on a, a sort of a fixed salary. Per year, per month, however it's uh, fixed. But you're paid a thousand dollars a month. And yet, surely, some weeks you're working harder. If you're in a production company, you're producing more. Other weeks, you're working less hard. And again, a production company, perhaps you're producing less. But most companies, if they produce more, a bit more one week, most companies aren't paying the workers any more. And the weeks when they produce a bit less, then they're not paying them any less. I know some companies do. What we're uh, saying here isn't applicable to all companies, but for most companies in the short term, labour is a fixed cost. In the long term, no. In the long term, if we find uh, we're working, um, uh, producing a lot less, we'll sack some of the workers and save money. If we're producing more, we'll have to take on more workers. But that's the long term. In the short term, most companies don't have more workers one week and fewer workers the next week. Labour tends to be a fixed cost. And in fact, for similar reasons, so do all the variable costs apart from materials. Because materials clearly, if you produce less, you need less. If you produce more, you need more. And so throughput accounting, we assume that the only truly variable cost is materials. That all of the costs are effectively fixed. Now, okay, again, uh, I'm still saying that's very much short term, but that's the assumption we make. And on that assumption, we do exactly what we did before. Exactly the same approach, but 
this time the only variable cost is materials. Uh, so let's do it. What did we do last time? We looked at the contribution. First of all, well, we will again. It's simply that the contribution this time. Remember, it's sales less variable cost. But if the only variable cost is materials, then for A, 25 less 8 is 17, the unit. For B, 28 less 20 is 8. Now, in fact, although it, that effectively on this assumption is the contribution, um, confusing to call it contribution, we call that the throughput. And what did we do then? Uh, we set up to make the best use of the limited hours. We said we'd work out the contribution per hour. Well, fine. We'll work out the throughput per hour. Uh, machine hours, it's two for A, it's one for B. And so the throughput per hour Just like contribution per hour before, same thing, but just on this assumption. For A, 17 over 2 is $8.50 per hour. Uh, for B, 8 over 1 is $8 per hour. Now, that's the throughput per hour, or more commonly, we call it the return per factory hour. And so every hour you making A generates 850, every hour you uh, making B generates $8. And so this time it turns out A is the best use of the unlimited hours, B is second best. And so what's our production plan going to be? Uh, this time we'll make A first, but remember. Uh, we won't make any more than we can sell. The maximum demand is 20,000. So we'll make 20,000 uh, A's. And each A takes up two hours. So that's using up 40,000 hours. Uh, with 48,000 hours in total. And so the remaining 8,000 hours we'll use to make B. And since B is one hour a unit, it means we'll make 8,000 Bs. So on this approach, there is our optimal production plan, if that's all we wanted. Albeit this does carry on, I want to know what the maximum profit is. Um, and a bit like last time, this bit's unlikely, but I'll do it to be safe. We know how many of each um, we're going to produce, so the total throughput that we'll get it's 20,000 A's, 8,000 B's. And the um, throughput per unit, 17 and 8. So a total of 404,000. Now that's the maximum throughput we can get. For profit though, we need to subtract the fixed costs. Uh, and like I said before, you'll probably, if this is relevant, be told it. Remember, we are assuming fixed costs include all costs apart from materials, all costs. And if you're told, oh, the total of them is 300,000, well, in total, we assume it's fixed, regardless of the production. If you're not told, which yet again, from 10th time, is unlikely, but if you're not told, we make the same assumption as before, that the costings were done before we knew there was a problem, so we were thinking we'd make 20,000 A's and 10,000 B's, the full demand. 
And how much did we charge per unit? Well, our new definition of fixed costs is all of them, apart from materials. So for A, five for labour, seven for other variable, and of course, the purely fixed, three. So for A, we must have been um, thinking there was a total of 10, 15, 300,000. And similarly for B, the fixed ones, labour, other variable, fixed, total of six, 60,000. And so, 360,000. That's what we thought we'd spend in total. And I'm pausing because I realise I'm repeating it again, but that's what we thought we'd spend in total. And even though we actually produced less because of this limit, uh, we assume that total stays fixed. And so the maximum profit is 44,000. Now, there's no point in comparing it with the previous one. I mean, in the exam, you're doing one or the other. You're not doing both and comparing. Although, since I have done both here, on the throughput approach, the maximum um, profit is less than it was using the conventional approach. And that does make sense here, if you think about it. With the key factor in the previous lecture, we were producing less units of B, I think it was. We were producing less units. And that meant we saved some of the all the variable costs. We saved a bit of materials and we saved a bit of labour and we saved a bit of other variable. Here on throughput, we are producing fewer units. But the only cost that we'll save as a result is on materials. Because again, the rest of them are all fixed. Anyway, don't worry about that. However, one extra bit that you could be asked for, and it's here, part B. It says calculate the throughput accounting ratios. And here is a bit of learning of definitions, and you are going to have to learn them. I know there's a formula sheet, but these aren't on the formula sheet. Uh, they're on the previous page. And the uh, last one, the throughput accounting ratio I know you can read yourself but still I'm writing it down it's defined as being, we'll discuss the relevance after, but it's defined as being the return per factory hour divided by the cost per factory hour. Now the return per factory hour, we, we already know, we did it our while back in a minute, we calculated earlier, but the cost per factory hour we're going to need, and the cost per factory hour is the total factory cost excluding materials divided by the hours available. So what is it here? The total of all the costs in the factory excluding materials, so the fixed factory costs, I said you'd probably be given, here we calculated, it's 360,000. How many hours are available in the factory? What was it, 48,000? And so we say the cost per factory hour, the cost per hour of running the factory, 360,000 over 48,000 is $7.50. And now we can do our throughput accounting ratios. For product A, 
Uh, what was the return per factory hour? $8.50. What's the cost per factory hour? We just worked out $7.50. I get 1.13, and usually we do this in two decimal places, but 1.13. What about B? Uh, the cost, uh, sorry, the throughput, the return per factory hour uh, was $8. Again, the cost per factory hour is $7.50. And so the ratio is 1.07. And again, I could make it longer by having a third product, a fourth product, but that wouldn't make it harder. It obviously just takes a bit longer. So arithmetically, um, I hope that's okay. And um, as I said, it's just it's a question of learning those definitions. Uh, but of course, why do we bother? What's the relevance of those? Um, there's two ways. Uh, reasons uh, we might be interested in this. Uh, the first, in some ways, is a bit silly, but surely when we're ranking the products, you know, which is which should we do first, what, which one should we do second, and so on. Well, the higher the throughput accounting ratio is, the better. So we should make as many A's as we can. Any hours left over as we can sell, sorry. Any hours left over, we'll then make as many Bs as we can. Uh, which in some ways, this is rather irrelevant. We already knew that. We already knew that A was better and B was second best. Okay, in the exam, if instead of giving you a whole question, they just told you the throughput accounting ratios, then fine. Uh, a is the better. Uh, more importantly though, uh, use of this is to appreciate what's happening. It's costing us seven fifty an hour to run the factory, and therefore, surely, we should aim to make sure all our products give us more than seven fifty an hour. The more it gives, the better. But if we're going to cover the costs of the factory. We want to aim to have um, returns of more than the 750. And of course, if it is more than 750, it means the throughput accounting ratio of more than one. So we want the throughput accounting ratio to be more than one. We focus on those which give the highest ratio, but we do everything we can to try and achieve a ratio for all our products of more than one. And how would you go about it? How could you improve the ratio? Improve the ratio by increasing the selling price if it's possible. Higher selling price, higher throughput, higher return per hour, and so on. How else? Ooh. Reduce cost of materials. If we can get the cost of materials down, again, it improves the throughput, it improves the ratio. What else? See if we can reduce the total factory costs. If we can get the factory costs lower, then the cost per factory hour is lower. And if the cost per factory hour is lower, the ratio will be higher. And finally, Think about this one. See if we can produce faster. If we can get the machines to operate faster in some way or another. Um, if A, if we could put it through the machine in only one hour, the return per factory hour would be higher. And if that's higher, the throughput ratio is higher. So there we are. As always, look back through the notes, re-listen to the lecture if uh, I said something too fast. Otherwise, 
have a go at the uh, online practice test. Um, five MCQs, five MCQs. Good.